Deshaun Jackson, thank you so much for joining the desk. We appreciate it. Sure, thanks for having me. Let me get to this first, because we just had an actor sitting in that same chair. Uh I want to know, did you get any any kind of funds from Silver Linus Playbook as much as they mentioned you in that movie? I I didn't, right? That's that's kind of weird. They should have Robert De Niro, everybody. Did you watch that movie? You liked it? I did. It was good, right? It was a great movie, um, you know, from start to finish. And, you know, I'm very honored to be out that movie with my jersey. Not my face, but uh, my (laughs) my presence wasn't there, but my face was I mean, my uh, jersey was in it, so I'm definitely uh, blessed about that. All right. Speaking For of sure. the Eagles, you happen to have a new coach. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I want to know, what was up with your new coach suddenly demoting Deshaun Jackson, <laughs> then promoting Deshaun Jackson, yeah. which required Deshaun Jackson to go in and have a little sit-down with the new coach? For sure. I mean, um, you know, at first, I, I think, you know, he came in with the mentality of, you know, he really didn't care, you know, who it was. Deshaun Jackson, Lash- LaShawn McCoy, uh, Michael Vick, uh, you know, he kept it fair and he kept it even. Um, you know, he wanted everybody to come in there and, and buy into the system and do everything you need to do to, you know, win a position. It wasn't like nobody had guaranteed spots and, you know, he wasn't caring if you had Pro Bowls or won any Super Bowls before, whatever the case may be. So, uh, you know, him coming from college, he ha- he definitely had to do that. And um, I respect it. Uh, but, you know, I did have to go in there and sit down with him and, you know, look him face to face and was like, Coach, what's up, man? Uh, you know, I've been here, been to Pro Bowls and been doing my thing in Philadelphia. So, you know, what's the case? So, uh, you know, he told me from the get-go, like, what it was, and I was like, all right, as a man, I could respect that. And, you know, throughout the play, I mean, throughout the uh, roster, he, he he did that with everybody and expected that from everybody, so. Well, did, did it work for you? Um, you know, at first it was kind of, you know, hard, honestly, uh, you know, just because of offense, the system he brought in there, um, you know, never really had to learn more than one position. I was always stuck, like, at the Z receiver, and I uh, just had to, whatever the route was, that's what I had to do. But now the offense is very complex, so depending on which way the, the call is, I might be at X, I might be at Z, I might be inside, I might be in the backfield. So it's one of those situations where as a, uh, you know, six-year veteran going in there, had to kind of go back to, you know, my skills and think about, all right, well, get in that playbook and do things you need to do. So, um, you know, it, well, it did work. Um. Deshaun, you haven't had, I mean, I, I obviously, kick return, punt returner, you're a receiver, I think you're electrifying talent, but you haven't had a 1,000-yard receiver season in the last two years. Do you think that factored into his decision to treat you the way he treated you initially, or do you believe that, you know, just coming from college to the pros, he was just trying to send that kind of message to everybody? I mean, honestly, I don't really think, you know, my stats had anything to do with it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, unfortunately, the past couple of years been rough for the Eagles, not only myself, for the whole team and, you know, a couple of other players and, you know, the organization, period. So, you know, with him coming in there, he had to install what he had to install. So everybody there, we got to buy in or, you know, get on and move on. What did you guys say to one another? in the aftermath of last season. Y'all lost like 12 games in 13 weeks. I know it was a miserable experience for you uh-huh. because you certainly ain't accustomed to losing. You look at Michael Vick, he was injured. Yeah. I, I sat here with Skip on several occasions said he was on suicide watch. I think the <laughs> offensive line owes no. all of y'all <laughs> apologies. They were pathetic, but that's a story for another day. In the end, yeah. what are the kind of things y'all said to one another? What kind of conversations did y'all have in the offseason about what this year needed to be like because of what happened last year? I think it was a reality check for everybody on that team. Honestly, uh, you know, all I can remember is coming in in um, 2008, Philadelphia Eagles, Dominic McNabb, Brian Westbrook, Brian Dawkins. With that mentality there, them guys didn't really accept nothing but winning. So for us to go out there and have a year like that last year, uh, Michael Vick, myself, McCoy, Macklin, I mean, we really had to look each other in the eye and say, I mean, come on, we're better than that. And, you know, last year was a lot of blamings on, you know, what the problems was, Andy Reid, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Michael Vick, the offensive line. So, uh, you know, for us to be in that, in that locker room, we really couldn't point fingers at anybody. We had to say, all right, we're looking at each other in the eye, and that's what we got to go deal with. But, uh, you know, as the season kept continuing to go on and go on, it was a struggle. It was this wrong, interceptions, turnovers, this, that, defense. I mean, so at the end of the day, we were all professional. We just got to go out there and get it done. Get the and, job done. Yeah, we can't really look backwards. And, yeah. uh, we're going to move forward this year. And we got Chip Kelly coming there. He's installed a great offense, a, you know, a high tempo. We're going to catch a lot of teams while we guard this year. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm back healthy. Um, you know, broke my ribs at the end of the season last year and things like that. So I'm just ready to get back out there and have a great year. We got to go to camp in a couple weeks. I mean, in a week, less than a week. Yeah. So it's, it's about Around that time. Corner. Yeah. Well, sure. speaking of Michael Vick, in mm-hmm. your opinion, who gets the start? In my opinion, honestly, I don't, I don't want to be put on the spot. I know y'all going to do me like that. But, uh, you know, Michael Vick, he has a lot of, uh, you know, he got a lot of confidence in himself, man. Honestly, he's been there uh, going on 12, 12 years in the NFL. And, you know, I think, you know, he'll get the job, honestly. Uh, Nick Foles is a great 
great talent um, coming in from Arizona, actually a Pac-12 guy. Um, you know, so he, he has height, and he, he has the height, he has the skills as well too. So, uh, you know, going into the camp, I think uh, Michael Vick will probably be the starter, but uh, you know we still don't know. I think Chip Kelly's going to keep everybody honest and keep everybody you know, open Skip, to it. <laughs> I want to ask, and, and I wanted to ask you this, Deshaun, and I'm glad Skip is here with me. Yeah. When I think about Michael Vick, first of all, let me put this on the record. I think that he should. I think it should be his job to lose, even yeah. if he loses it before the season begins. Yeah. I think it should be his job to lose going into training camp. That's number one. Sure. Number two, I'm waiting to see. What Michael Vick is going to do from this perspective. Uh -huh. We had Cam Newton two years ago. Yeah. Now we got RG3 in the same division. Exactly. And we've got Colin Kaepernick and Russell Wilson in the same conference. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like guys, it's, long, it's almost like the NFL world is looking at Michael Vick like this is what you want to work. These are the new breed of fellas up in here. I mean, they, they, Mike, they your ten, time is past. They, ten, year, they ten years younger than that's what my I'm man, saying. No, my man been doing it for a long time. So but that's once, what I'm saying. Once them guys get to that point, you're going to see how they do, too. It's going to be somebody else coming in. No, no, college. no. What I'm asking is because those guys are in, do yeah. you think that's going to serve as an extra level of motivation for, for sure. Michael Vick to come out and do what he does? I mean, from, He's capable of doing it. Yeah, from, from day one when I came, I mean, when Michael Vick actually came in, because I was actually there like two years before Michael Vick came in, um, you know, they tried to switch his, his plan skills up a little bit, uh, you know, try to sit back and just be a pocket passer. And, uh, you know, first off, Michael Vick is a, a quarterback that uses his legs first and foremost. And, yes. You know, when things break down, that's, that's what he got to depend on. He can't sit back there and just, you know, take a hit. So, you know, um, and when times get rough, um, you know, I try to go deep a lot of times and throw the ball. I say, Vick, just throw it out there. I'm going to go run past everybody and go catch the ball. But, uh, you know, to, to try to get a Michael Vick to stay in the pocket when things kind of shut down, that's kind of hard to do and expect him to just pass the ball, pass the ball and not, you know, use his legs. So as long as he's able to still use his legs and do things like that, I think he'll be all right. But, you know, the guys coming in there like the Russell Westbrooks and, I mean, the Russell uh, Wilsons and, you know, guys like Cam Newton, RG3, uh, you know, running is, is, is hard for a quarterback, honestly. As you can see, you know, what happened to RG3, taking them hits is, is a brutal game. The NFL is not no joke. <laughs> so as long as you can get down and slide, do things like that, which I encourage Michael Vick to do, get down, bro. We, got, we need you, man. <laughs> yes. We need yes. you. Learn how to slide, man. <laughs> for sure. Any truth to the reports that Foles outplayed Michael through the spring? I don't, I don't think so, honestly, man. They they both was out there, uh, you know, through, throughout the whole offseason. Uh, you know, this was actually one of my first years of making the whole offseason workouts and things like that. So, you know, really just being dedicated, really being able to see um, their competition level. And, you know, I, I definitely respect Chip Kelly because he, he actually did let them go out there. It wasn't nobody just, all right, you're going to take all the snaps with the first team. Uh, it was actually Foles was taking some, Vic was taking some. And throughout the practice, we really couldn't get comfortable with any quarterback because it was like one series here, Foles, one series here, Vic. So, um, you know, the competition level was at a high level, and I don't think anybody actually outplayed anybody. Um, you know, Vic did a great job of learning the system, and Foles did the same thing. So, How far behind Matt Barkley? Matt Barkley ain't too far behind either, man. He came in and did a good job. Uh, you know, Matt Barkley is a guy I've been, you know, kind of checking out since he's been here in SoCal. And, you know, he's done some great things. He played at Modern Day. Actually, Long Beach probably at Modern Day is one of them rivals. So mm -hmm. uh, to be able to see him come in there and for him to really fall to the fourth round, that was kind of shocking to me because he's actually a great talent. And, you know, he's done some great things. I don't, at, I, I don't know if you've heard the news, but other than questions at free safety, yeah. The Dallas Cowboys supposedly have upgraded. Plus, they have a new $108 million quarterback. Upgraded to who? You've got, that's so that, sarcastic. They, no, no, I, mean, I don't to? believe it. I'm just saying. It, 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 to just, me, I'm I don't feel that way. About the, I don't feel that way about the Cowboys. <laughs> but I'm just telling you. I then mean, you've got, you've got you Washington. Know, that's a rival. I'm saying you've got the Washington Redskins. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, you've got the New York Giants. You have some people that have said, they got the Philadelphia Eagles field yeah, last. in the last place that's in the NFC. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, that's discouraging, honestly. I mean, the Philadelphia Eagles, we still the top five team in the NFL, if you ask me. So, I mean, regardless of what everybody else say, we're going to go out there and we're going to get it done this year. You said top five team in the NFL? Top five. Top I five. said it. Yeah. I said top five. Say I mean, I could keep us at 28 for, go. you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm saying my, my chest sticking out and everything. Top five in the NFL. Top five in the NFL. Well, listen, well, that man. means you could win the yeah, NFC. Any year, we should be able to. I mean, you know. I'm yeah. not. I didn't I mean, you, have, you might not agree, but honestly, I didn't I have you low. <laughs> I didn't have you low, but I damn sure didn't have your top five. Hey.